Right now, we get the chance to speak to Eagles second round pick, Cooper DeGene. He joins us right now on the Midday Show. Cooper, how you doing, man? I'm great. How are you guys? Pretty good, pretty good. So, Cooper, I'm, I'm going to come right out the gate and I'm going to ask you this question. You probably heard this before. So, are you more comfortable playing corner or safety? Uh, I mean, he wasn't I, ready I, for that, Joe. He was. He, <laughs> he thought I was about to ask that other question. <laughs> um, no, obviously, you know, throughout my whole college career, I played corner. So, I mean, that's that's where that's where I'd say I'm most comfortable um, right now. But in college, I came in as a safety. I took safety reps. Um, you know, so wherever wherever I'm I'm put at, I'm, I think I'll be I'll be just fine. You know, learning from these coaches, and 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 they'll help me along the way. Speak about learning from these coaches. How was it? You, you know, you, you're in Philadelphia. You're coming from Iowa. How was that first rookie OTA? It was awesome. It was awesome to to just be in the building, get back to playing football again. Um, you know, learning football, talking ball with the coaches um, and and my fellow fellow teammates, fellow rookies. Um, you know, so it's it's good to just um, you know hear and see the way they think about the game um, and learn from them. Um, you know, the different techniques and and different ins and outs of of our defense, um, you know, so it was it was a lot of fun to to get back out on the field and, and play some ball again. Cooper, take us through the call you got from the Eagles when they made you the 40th pick. I, I'm, you've probably seen it. I mean, you've lived it, but the other side of it was the Eagles draft room. They put out a really cool video of of kind of the, the inner workings of the draft room. They really wanted to get you on day two. They were trying to trade up and move around, and they eventually did to get the 40th pick and draft you. T- take us through when you got the call, and have you seen the video? D- did you realize, and have you realized how much they wanted you? In fact, there was a clip of the video where the Rams g- made the pick before, and they thought it was going to be you, and H- Howie Roseman and Jeff Lurie were upset. Like, they thought you were off the board to the Rams, and then they were excited when it was a different player. Have you seen it? T- take us through that whole moment when you got drafted. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously Philly Philly wasn't even up on, on the board yet at 40. Uh, I forget who it was, so I didn't I – didn't, I didn't expect them to be on the phone when I when I picked it up from my um uh, from my agent. Um, you know, but when I when I heard uh when I heard who was on the other side of the phone, you know, I was I was really excited. Um, you know, 'cause I was I was telling my agent, you know, Philly Philly would be the be the place I'd I'd love to be. Um, you know, just, just from my pre draft their their defense. Um talking ball with them was, was really awesome then obviously that that video comes out later. Um, you know, then them trying to trade up and 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 try and get me uh it was was really cool to see i think um you know how much they wanted me you know it it makes me you know just want to give that much more to them and and this organization you know you know just every time i step out on the field or in the meeting room you know just give it my all you know for them because because they wanted me that bad you know so um makes me just want to go out there and and play that much harder so now coop we we all know that you were you were projected to go in the first round. That didn't happen. How disappointed in you were were you in that? And how much motivation does that give you? You knowing that you you should have been a first round talent, or you feel like you should have been a first round talent. Yeah, obviously initially it was after after round one ended. I was I was a little upset, um, you know. But you kind of you kind of look at it in, in a bigger picture. You know, I I knew I was going to get the opportunity to play to play football, you know, somewhere. Um, you know, I, did, I just didn't know where. Um, I just had to wait a little longer. Um, you know, and you know when I got that call from Philly, I was I was I was really excited. You know, so I just I don't I don't think there's any extra motivation. I'm I'm already a motivated guy. You know, to this is this is a game I love to play. So, um, you know, when I picked up that call and and I knew where I was going, I was just excited to 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 get rolling and and learn learn the defense as fast as possible, get out on the field this this past weekend, and then get back to work here next week. You know what, Coop? I, I don't know if, if you're on social media a whole lot, but there was a comment that was made by Austin Rivers about at least 30 players being able to play from the NBA, go to the NFL, and make that easy transition. I had the opportunity yeah. to ask you because you did play baseball, I mean, excuse me, basketball, and I saw you dunking on some folks. So to you, <laughs> which sport is easier to play? Is it basketball or is it football? Or should I say the hardest sport to play? Hardest sport to play? Um, I mean, I might be biased, but I, th- I think football is uh, the hardest sport to play. Um, you know, I, I think there's plenty of guys who can play play basketball um, at a high level in the NFL right now. But I also I also think there's there's guys in the NBA who could who could play football in, in the NFL as well. Um, you know, you, you got a lot more guys in the NFL than the NBA, so I think you can find 30 guys. 
you know, to, to go play, um, in, in the NBA. Um, you know, but that's, that's a, it was a, it was an interesting argument. I saw, I, I saw a lot of NFL guys, you know, <laughs> arguing back, you know, saying there's, there's a lot of guys who could play in the NBA. Um, you know, and, and vice versa. Um, you know, but I think, I think there's, there's quite a few guys who could play basketball at a high level in the NFL. Cooper, one thing we noticed uh, looking at your highlights and seeing you play in college, you don't just play defense. When you have an opportunity to get the ball, you take it and you run it back for touchdowns. That doesn't happen very often. We can name some of the guys in the NFL that done a lot over the years, like Dion or Ed Reed. It seems like you have a knack for that. Is that because of your offensive background? Is that just a, hey, I have the ball, I'm going to try to go score? T- take us inside your mind when you make a play on the ball, because if it feels like you, you want to think, I'm going to go score once I catch this. Absolutely. That's that's exactly my my mindset. Find the end zone, you know, no matter where I'm at on the field. However, I got to do it. Just try, just try and get in the end zone, um, you know. And I I think you know playing quarterback in high school and and having the ball in my hands and running around throwing it, all that stuff. So I th- I think that helps a lot, definitely. Um, you know, that offensive background. You know, whenever I touch the ball, you know, as as a defensive guy, you know, getting to touch the ball. That's that's what you want to do is 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 go score because you don't get you don't get those op- opportunities very often, um, you know. So my mindset is just to just to go try and try and find a way to put it in the end zone. You know, Coop, I'm gonna kind of set you up a little bit, and 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 you know, I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable, but I feel like you know, my rookie year, I had like I knew where I wanted to be. So I'm gonna ask you this question. And I want you to answer it the, honestly if you can, or if you don't want to, then that that's another thing. But Cooper DeGene, first game of the season is in Brazil. Where is Cooper DeGene? Is is he is he starting? What in your mind? Where is Cooper DeGene on this field? I mean, I I think I think first off is just Coop, you know ain't. coming in. And I I still got a lot ain't to that, learn. Coop, I ain't asked you all that, you know? Coop. I, ain't, <laughs> I, still, I still got I still got a lot lot to learn. Um, you know, but I've I've been working you know inside and outside. Um, you know, so I just I just want to earn my role and the respect Coop, of the guys Coop, in the locker room. Coop. Coop, I ain't asked you all that, dog. I, I, like, is Cooper the G? Are, are we start? We starting? Is that what we trying to do? We trying to start? I just, I just want to come in and, and make an impact in any way I can, whether it's defense, special teams, whatever it is. I, I try to get you, Joe. All right, no yeah. pressure, Cooper. I, I want to pick six of Jordan Love. No pressure. I'm just, I want to pick six of Jordan Love and a win down in Brazil. Cooper DeGene joining us right now, Eagles rookie defensive back. So, Cooper, what have you been told, and what do you think the plan might be? Is it Because there's different ways to do this. A player like you that has shown some versatility, you could learn one spot and try to master that, and then maybe you'll play that or move, or you can learn all of these things at once. Do you have an idea of what Vic Fangio and, and the coaches here want to do with you in terms of teaching you Outside corner, inside corner, safety. Have you been? Has it been relayed to you? Kind of what the early plan will be for your development here? Yeah, I think um, you know. Obviously, rookie minicamp, I I worked inside and then um, the corner spot as well. Um, you know, but it's it's only been you know what it was only two practices. Um, you know, so um, I, pre-draft, I, I talked to him about all three positions. You know, but obviously. Um, you know, where they had me at right now, just starting out at the outside corner and, and working the nickel spot a little bit. Um, you know, so I mean it's only only been two practices. Still got a lot to learn about this about this defense, you know, from, from the older guys especially who've been there. Um, you know, so I think I think the biggest thing is, is the versatility part and allowing me to play, you know, different different positions, which I think I think helps. Um, you know, so, which is good. You know, but I'm I'm excited to to get in and, and learn and, and try and fit in wherever I, wherever I can to this defense. Cooper, I got to ask you, because I'm just wondering, I'm curious, are you tired of the white corner questions? I mean, it's unavoidable. <laughs> you, you were asked it the night you were drafted, and I'm sure if you play outside corner and you're good, people are going to say, wow, he's a white outside corner. It do, obviously doesn't matter. You made it this far. You could play corner. Do you think it's silly? Is it annoying? What, what do you think when you're asked that stuff? Yeah, I've been I've been asked a lot. I mean, even, even throughout college, you know. Um... But yeah, I mean, obviously it's it's something that that's going to come up. It's it's a rare thing, you know. But I mean, I I don't look at it any other way. I just just go out and and play football, you know. No matter where I'm at on the field, whether I'm playing corner, uh, safety, nickel, whatever it is, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, what my what my skin color is. I'm I'm still going to go out and and just play the game, you know, the way that I play it. 
So, Cooper, I, I did see uh, yesterday uh, when you were doing an interview, you said you could beat Caitlin Clark one-on-one in basketball. So I got, oh, he said that? He said it. But oh, he said, okay. So I got to ask. So if you guys played, obviously it'd be a big thing. Like, how would you beat her? I mean, she's – Cooper, she's pretty darn good. I mean, she could shoot the lights out. Would you, you – you think you'll go to the basket, dunk on her? Like, how, how are you going to beat Caitlin Clark here? Yeah, my uh, my jump shot's pretty rusty nowadays. <laughs> uh, so I'd, I'd probably have to – I have to get to get to try and get to the hoop uh, a few times, um, but I'd, I'd I'd definitely have to get get some stops though. You know, she can she can shoot the lights out of the ball. You know, so um, I don't I don't think it'll ever happen. But she's she's got a lot a lot um, you know bigger things to to focus on. But you know, it's 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 a it's a cool topic to talk about. So wait a minute, Coop. You're gonna tell me you could beat Caitlin Clark, but you can't guarantee me you're gonna be starting <laughs> at the beginning of the season. What's going on, man? What's going on? Oh <laughs> uh, shoot! Fun hypotheticals, yeah. Cooper. Man, yeah. listen, we appreciate you hopping on today. Good luck here, and uh, I don't know if it's happened yet, but d- don't uh, don't take it personally if we mispronounce your name. People like to say John. You could have Cooper DeJohn. Oh no, he's in Philly now because yeah. it's Cooper DeJohn. Yeah, just it's not yeah. a personal thing. It's just what we do here, right? Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. Cooper, man, appreciate it. Good luck, and uh, we'll catch up down line. Thank you. Have a good one, man. Thank you. Appreciate there he goes. That. Eagles rookie Cooper DeGene. So, yeah, he would not guarantee starting. I tried to nail him down, I know though. you did. I tried to get him, though. He seemed like a good kid, man. I- I'm excited to see where these young guys are going to play because, you know me, I-, I-, I anticipate a lot of young guys being on this defensive squad for the Philadelphia Eagles, and I anticipate him being one of them. I- I'm just excited to see what they bring to the table, man. Hope springs eternal when it comes to the young Thunder. Did I ask for too much for a pick six of Jordan Love in week one? I mean, well, you I, know, he kind of laughed it off, but yeah. I, I can tell I mean, you like I, that's this, That's what I'm man. expecting. To a man. He he knows where he wants to be. I do appreciate the fact that he's paying deference to the to the older cats. Yeah, that's what that felt like. Yeah, that's what it was. He's paying deference. But I'm telling you, he, he feels to me like a guy who feels that he can play at this level. And he has he has something in his in his heart. Where he feels he could should be a starter, he's just he's just being he's just being respectful to the old head. The other thing I've noticed just listening to talk with us in interviews, he has an athletic confidence about himself. Like yes. when he said, I, "I get the ball, I try to go score." When he thinks he could beat Caitlin Clark one on one, I mean, it's all fun. But like when you say things like that, that strikes me as the kind of athlete who thinks I'm better than you, and yeah. I, I like that. And right? ain't nothing wrong with that, man, because every professional athlete feels that they are the best at their position. If you don't feel that way, then why are you playing? Like seriously, yeah.